Dave the Butcher Clifford here as we get ready for the ninth annual Night of Champions at WXC 66, January 13th, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens in Southgate, Michigan. Huge main event that night, and we're here with one half of that main event. Current WXC professional welterweight champion Daquan Tarantula Townsend to talk about his epic, gigantic matchup against Bobby Nash. Now, Daquan, you're ranked number one on Tapology.com here in Michigan, number six overall for welterweight professionals, 15 and five. How much does this matchup mean to you five years in the making? Man, I've been wanting this fight for forever, man. So I've always wanted to test myself against some of the best. And uh, I've always watched people with talent at 170 in my weight, uh, weight division as I've been on top to see the nice up-and-comers so I know how to prepare myself for them. And uh, me and Bobby's been crossing paths one too many times. I know it's bound to happen. Well, and, you know, obviously one of the most knowledgeable professionals that, that I've come in contact with, you know, you seem to see everything. I mean, you know, num well, not only are you training with the number two ranked uh, welterweight and typology.com, John White, but you know something about everybody on that list, nationally, uh, locally. What is it about Bobby Nash's game that gives you so much confidence? Well, the fact that Bobby Nash, the thing is this, I, I knew that Bobby Nash wanted to test himself. I just felt like um, the way that he, um, the way, the thing, watching Bobby fight and watching him fight and watching him fight, I've seen too many mistakes in his game. And even as an amateur, I know that Bobby, I, I, want, I don't want to say a one-trick pony, but I know specifically on how he wrestles using his wrestling technique. He's more of a, he is a power double. He's not no guy to have to worry about shooting none, taking me down an open cage. Three punch combination, rush a guy against the cage, take him down. And that's the thing that I like about him. And the fact that he's even tall, you know? So I, I look at a lot of his striking capabilities. I, I, and he's never been finished by being knocked out, but I want to be the first person to really actually test him. He hasn't fought no strikers for real. Does he have a chance to beat you? My, my mind, hell no. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, the, the bold predictions have been coming from the beginning when, when you came on to WXC's UMOR Live podcast, and we just happened to start bullshitting about it, to be honest, just kind of kicking it around. And then all of a sudden, he was on the phone, you guys are talking about the matchup, matchmaker Mike Pettinelli puts this together, and here we are talking about it for January 13th. I mean, it's got to be one of the most exciting fights on a huge card as it is. So as you get ready to be a main event on a, on a card that is likely to have a lot of fights go the distance when it's this well matched, do you prepare by trying to train later at night and, and when you're used to being the main event, used to going five rounds? I mean, do you go in there and, and burn the midnight oil to prepare to be ready at 11, 12 o'clock at night? I mean, the way I look at it is like this. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I don't have to train late at night to prepare myself for going to war because I'm used to it. I've been doing it for seven, eight years, so it's nothing new to me. I'm used to being the main event on damn near every card I've ever been on. So I'm used to fighting late. There's times when I first won my title in Crystal Gardens, I didn't step in the case to almost close to one o'clock in the morning, you know, and that was as an amateur at WXC. So I'm okay with that. You know, it doesn't bother me about a late fight, whatever. I want to take a nap, I'll take a nap. I know the time I interact with the crowd. I just be me. I'm one of the most relaxed fighters that you ever meet. Even when it comes to the doctors, you know, checking my blood pressure and everything else, they always say, why am I so relaxed? And it's just another battle. That's all, it's just another person that's stepping in my way to get into my ultimate dream. Well, and speaking of winning the WXC Welterweight Professional Championship, an opponent is interesting as it pertains to this matchup. Uh, you took that belt from Tanya Skinny Man Dixon, and that is Bobby Nash's only loss as a professional, correct? Yes. So what, what, how does that factor in? I know that there's been some banter. Now, I know a lot of people uh, were predicting that you would win that fight, which was a tough challenge. Tanya Dixon training a you know, UFC fighter, tough, tough uh, competitor uh, defending a belt. Uh, only one person picked you to lose that fight. Who was that again? That was Bobby. Bobby picked that fight. Bobby picked me to use that fight. And the way I look at it like this, as I told him in general, Skinny Man is no slouch. Even though I, even though he has a high record, you know, equal, equal when it comes to his wins and losses, Skinny Man has fought a lot of tough people. Skinny Man has beat people that he was set to lose against that he has overcame. He's a world series of fighting veteran. Bellator and he's fought a couple times in the UFC. So the way I look at the situation is 
I don't really sleep on any opponent, regardless of the record. And when Bobby fought Skinny Man, I feel like that's the first time Bobby actually got exposed. He fought somebody who has been around the game. He's fought somebody who is well-rounded, should I say. And he's fought somebody who, um, who actually knows when to pick it up the pace and to turn it, you know? So they actually stopped him and utilized his wrestling. And Bobby's so used to taking people down in the cage, submitting them or grinding them on and beating them up. And he was able to do that with Skinny Man. So it kind of forced him into a plan B, which he never had one. Well, and that's, uh, that's going to come into play January 13th. I mean, all these things is what we look at when we talk about the fight and what uh, you look at in preparation. And speaking of preparation, not only obviously training with the number two welterweight in this region and in Michigan, John White, I mean, there's a lot of good looks from a lot of good wrestlers. Troy Lampson comes to mind, another Division I uh, competitor. Uh, obviously, at Murcielago, uh, in Lansing, you've got an, an outstanding array of individuals to prepare you for this contest. But that's not all. You go out and see Bang Ludwig and do three a days with one of the better striking coaches in the nation. I mean, someone who's responsible for a lot of world champions. Uh, going out to team elevation, uh, sharpening jujitsu and wrestling. Uh, you know, do, does that factor into you keeping this fight on the feet so that you can get that head kick knockout that you want? Of course. The way I look at it is like this. This is the thing. I pay attention to Bobby. I've watched Bobby fight for the longest. And Bobby leaves open and say he does not realize that he leaves open that certain strikers that he's actually fought are not capable of progressing or are not capable of taking advantage of. What Bobby doesn't realize, I am doing my research on him. I am the longest fighter he's ever faced. The longest fighter he's ever faced and I am the best striker he's ever, he's ever stepped in a cage with. So the thing is, is he thinks it's Muhammad Ali because he knocks out a couple people. That's cool. He's never fought in a cage with me. And he's never really actually been tested. Now the thing is, is the fight with him and Skinny Man, Skinny Man messed up his hand. He cut his hand in, I believe, the first round. And it wasn't, he wasn't able to use his right hand a lot. He had them give him, like, I think he had to get stitches afterwards because he cut it open with his wraps being too tight or whatever the situation may be. Mm -hmm. But... Skinny Man tried to capitalize on the same thing that I seen that Bobby leaves open. He's just not, he's just slow, and I didn't consider him as a great striker as well. I mean, anybody who I'm in a cage with and we're circling each other and you're crossing your feet, you should be in a cage with me because I'm going to capitalize off of that. Mm -hmm. So I pay attention to those certain things, and the things, if Bobby leaves those things open, I'm going to take advantage of it. And if I, now I'm the type of person, if I get a hold of you or if I see you rock days, whatever, I'm going to finish you. So as I said in general, Bobby may try to have a plan B, you know, of, well, I don't know if he does have a plan B, but he's going to definitely need one because they're just taking me down, beating me up on the ground. That's not going to happen. You know, I won't deny the fact that the credit of him having to be in a D1 wrestler, you give credit when credit is due, but it's going to take a lot more than you just being able to take me down. And that's just it. Well, we've got our prediction. Uh, you're going to finish Bobby Nash. Now, anything as we wrap this up, what would you like to say to the fans uh, or anybody that's getting ready to decide whether or not they want to get that ticket early for January 13, 2017? Well, I'm going to put it to you like this. This is a fight that I've ever wanted. This is a fight that I've wanted more than anything in my life. So the way I look at it like this, you know, number one and versus number two. He's getting tired of being in my shadow, and I'm getting tired of people thinking that he can beat me. So... As I said, it's going to be a five-round war. And if it gets to the past the third round, I'm going to take his ass to deep water straight up. It's January 13, 2017, the ninth annual WXC United Champions inside Crystal Gardens in Southgate. Get your tickets now. Be there. Dave the Butcher Clifford here for WXC as we get ready for the ninth annual Night of Champions, January 13th, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens in Southgate, Michigan. Here with your main event competitor and challenger for the WXC Welterweight Professional Championship, Bobby Nashty Nash. No stranger to main events, no stranger to big fights, especially in the WXC, but this one here has got to be one of the biggest fights that you've ever had in your life. Uh, according to tapology.com, 
which has you at number three, by the way, mm -hmm. for some reason. You're fighting the number one welterweight in our state, number six overall. What does that mean to you to finally accomplish this fight that's been five years in the making? Uh, you know, it's great. Um, it's a fight that Michigan MMA wants to see. Uh, it's a fight that, you know, my friends want to see, the fans want to see. So it's exciting, you know, to give uh, the fans and Michigan MMA what they want. So I'm excited. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, there's been a lot of predictions thrown out about this fight over the years. And, of course, as we get ready for January, they're coming in by the dozens. Now, your opponent has made his own prediction. He predicts that he will finish you with a head kick <laughs> and that it won't really? take very long. I mean, uh, I know that a lot of people expect wow. a five-round war out of you guys, but he is uh, talking about seeing holes in your game and that, he, and that uh, your only chance to beat him is to wrestle, and he's going to take that away from you. Okay. He's going to take my wrestling away? There's no way. The thing is, he's, uh, every time he's fought someone, um, that, that he's lost to has been a wrestler. Well, guess what? I'm way better than any wrestler he's ever been with. And if he's sleeping on my hands, man, he's going to get clipped and I'm going to put him away. You know, I, I think with my jiu-jitsu, with my striking, with my wrestling, you know, I am the, I am the total package. And uh, he's going to have he's gonna have his hands full. There's no doubt about that. I don't, I don't see it going five rounds. I'm going to finish him. Now, both of you looking for the finish. And Daquan being a notorious slow starter, looks to counterpunch a lot looks to exploit mistakes that his opponents make, has often had to go into deep waters to wait for those opponents to make a mistake. And so I see that it is your game plan to not let him get that far and to take advantage of that slow start? You know, um, my, my, my game plan is, uh, you know, I, I'm aggressive. I'm an aggressive fighter. I want to be in his face nonstop. You know, I'm going to come in absolute phenomenal shape. Uh, and uh, that's why I don't see it going five rounds because I'm just going to push the pace and I will make him break. He will break. I don't know if it's the first round, second round, third round, fourth round, but he will break. He will not be able to keep up with my pace, so um, I'll be finishing him. Well, and you did finish your last fight by knockout in the second round, uh, traveling to do so. And as of late, it seems like you are having a lot more success. You're growing as a striker. Than Anybody that wrestles in Division One immediately gets checked off as, as a strong wrestler, which obviously well, but this every single fight starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it seems like you're taking advantage of that more and more so when you look to display this inside the cage at WXC 66, January 13, 2017. Now, for anybody that's heading down to Crystal Gardens, uh, what would be your message to the fans? Anybody that's on the fence about buying a ticket to this fight, which you're crazy if you are, uh, w what do you have in store for these fans? Obviously predicting a finish, but... Uh, this is a huge fight. Don't miss it. I'm going to come in the absolute best shape of my life. I will be the best Bobby Nash January 13th. Um, this is not a fight you want to win, uh, want to miss because... Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, no. Okay. I, that was not very good. But. That's fine, but let's, uh, let's, how about a message for your opponent then? Why don't you tell, tell Daquan Townsend what he has to expect? I'll keep it simple. January 13th, bring it. I want the best Daquan Townsend uh, and just bring it because I'm coming full throttle. And one last thing too. Well, let's talk about Fuse MMA. You know, uh, one of the better coaches in the region. A uh, very accomplished jiu-jitsu artist, Don Richard. Um, when and if that game does get to the ground, Obviously, you know, it, it can wear down, it can, it, can, it can take that gas, take its toll on your gas tank. Um, what do you have in store to fight a long fighter like that? You know, uh, when it does go to the ground, there's a few things I have to worry with uh, Daquan, because he is long. Maybe I see these uh, triangle, a couple of guys. Personally, I don't think he's going to be able to triangle me. Um, I grapple every day. Uh, my jiu-jitsu continues to get better every day. Um, so if it does go to ground, I plan on passing his guard, maintaining position, make, having him make a mistake, and capitalizing on it. Now, do you like to often try to capitalize on the confidence of your opponents? Because uh, Daquan did bring up right there in that very chair that your only loss as a professional and as a mixed martial artist overall was to a man he defeated yeah. for this belt that you're now challenging for. Hey, that's great. You know, he, he did beat who I lost to, but you got to remember, man, I was 2-0. Uh, this is before I ever went to Fuse, before I ever learned how to throw hands, before I learned striking. Daquan knows, everyone else knows, the, the, everyone knows that, that I am a completely different fighter from, uh, you know, two years ago, a year and a half ago. So, I mean, 
he's a fool if he thinks I'm uh, going to be the same fighter. Well, and that's the WXC Professional Welterweight Championship up for grabs. Ninth annual Night of Champions, WXC 66, January 13, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens in Southgate, Michigan. Be there.